we have supercharged edge functions which allows us to do these three new things that we couldn't do before. Now this one's pretty cool. This one's fantastic. This one is incredible, but you're just gonna have to wait. Number one, you can now respond from a Superbase Edge function with a WebSocket connection. So a great example of when you might wanna use this is if you wanted to check out OpenAI's real-time API, which is a WebSocket interface that you can use to send and receive messages back and forth as a conversation. But if you were to subscribe your browser directly to this WebSocket URL, you need to pass across your OpenAI API key, which you probably don't wanna to expose to the browser. So let's use a Superbase Edge function to proxy that request. So the browser just sends a prompt to our edge function and then our edge function which knows this super secret value can then include all of that configuration and send that prompt on to OpenAI. So to set up a super base edge function to handle WebSocket connections follows the same API as HTTP so we're serving a Dino function we then check the headers to see if we want to upgrade this to a WebSocket connection we then call upgrade WebSocket and pass in the request to get back our socket and our response, we then configure our WebSocket to connect to the OpenAI WebSocket as soon as a connection is made, and then configures all of that super secret stuff like that OpenAI API key that we do not want to expose to the browser. And then once we've opened that WebSocket connection to OpenAI, we want to take any messages coming in from our Edge Functions WebSocket and proxy them across to our OpenAI WebSocket. And then we want to configure the reverse of that that, where anytime we receive a message from our OpenAI WebSocket, we want to send that back through our Edge Functions WebSocket connection. We then just send back that response, which happens pretty much instantaneously. And then we have that socket connection established so we can send and receive messages. Another thing we need to configure for WebSockets is the config.toml for our Superbase Edge Functions. If we're running locally, we need to set this policy under Edge Runtime time to per worker instead of the default, which is one shot. So this policy will keep our edge function running even after we send that initial response. We also have a super simple Next.js app, which is a client component because we need access to all of those browser APIs to establish our WebSocket connection, which is what we're doing right here, where we're sending a HTTP request to our edge function, which will then proxy those messages through to the OpenAI WebSocket. So then whenever we receive a message on our edge function WebSocket, we collect it up into a big array of all of our responses. And then we have our send message function, which configures our conversation to say we want this to be a friendly assistant, not like those unfriendly assistants you get over at or we wanna keep our open AI assistance super friendly. We've then hard coded the prompt that we want to send from the browser. So we're just asking it, can you tell me a joke? We then have this final response create type, which tells open AI to start actually processing this prompt. And then the UI that we're rendering is super simple. We just have a button with the text tell joke, which when clicked, calls that send message function with our hard-coded prompt and triggers the whole WebSocket to WebSocket conversation. And then we iterate over any of those responses as we get them back from our WebSocket and have this unnecessarily complex block of code to just pretty print these responses out on the page. And that looks something like this, where we have that initial response when our session is created. And then if we ask it to tell us a joke and we'll see that streams in a lot of these Delta changes to our response text. So here's a joke and so on until we reach our text done message, which collects up that full response and says, sure, here's a joke for you. Why don't skeletons fight each other? Because they don't have the guts. <laughs> yeah, it's not that funny. Uh -oh. Tough crowd. Number two, we now have a temp directory in edge functions where you can store files. So to show why this is so powerful, Again, we have a Superbase Edge function. And one thing to call out is we have this before unload event listener that allows us to do some logging immediately before the Edge function terminates. So even if we run out of memory or something that might happen soon, we can still log that information out to help 
future us. So then we have this Dino function, which we're using to upload a zip file. We're generating a random ID for it and then using Superbase storage to create a bucket. And then this super intimidating block of code here is passing our zipped compressed file across to this zip reader stream function, which will decompress all of those files and then upload them to Superbase storage. And finally, we'll just send back a response with our upload ID. The problem here is that we are unzipping this file into memory. So we need enough memory in our edge function to hold all of those files temporarily while we're uploading them to Superbase storage. Now that works perfectly well if our zip file is small, but if we have a larger zip file, one that's bigger than 100 meg, then we're going to run out of memory while we're decompressing those files, which we need to do before uploading them to Superbase storage. But rather than streaming that massive Massive zip file directly to Superbase storage from our edge function, we can use this temporary ephemeral file storage to dump it all there and not need to eat up all of the memory of our edge function. So to do that, we have another Superbase edge function, which is pretty similar, except rather than extracting all of the files out of that zip, we instead call dino write file and use this special temp directory. So this needs to be slash TMP and then slash what we want to actually upload. So again, that's that generated upload ID that we're using for Superbase storage as well. And then before the next line of code entirely spoils this, number three, background tasks. This means your Superbase Edge functions can continue running after sending a response back to the user. And so to set up a background task, we simply call this edge runtime dot wait until function and then give it a function that returns a promise. So this edge function will keep running until that promise resolves. But the cool thing is the user doesn't need to wait around for all of that work to happen. We can send that response back to them immediately because their job is already done. And again, in order for this to continue running, we need to set that policy in config.toml to per worker rather than the default of one shot. Now, background jobs are particularly powerful when they're combined with some sort of schedule like cron. But for that, you need to check out this video right here. I go through how simple it is to use the Superbase dashboard to create cron jobs that can run automatically on any schedule you can dream of. But until next time, Keep building cool stuff.